Hi, we're Laura and Dan. We've bought a beautiful rustic Portuguese barn and have literally zero knowledge of building and farming, but plan on converting it into a beautiful off-grid homestead. Follow us on our journey. I'm just walking down to the bottom of the land to the shed so we can get the paint. The paint's at the outside of the outhouse. I'm looking forward to doing this because it's just going to finish it off really nicely. So what the paint's going to do, it's just going to protect the, the wood on the outside from the elements. It's going to stop it from rotting when it gets wet. So, And it also makes it look nice. So, What we've done already is we've got some spray foam and we've kind of sprayed all the all the gaps where like little probably like wasps would come in and make nests and stuff so we've done all the spray form and, and sorted that out so no little animals can come and make nests in the outhouse hopefully but yeah I think painting it painting will just make it look really nice so I'm looking forward to, to getting it done As we've mentioned in previous videos, we're trying to do this build on a budget, so we brought over paint that we found in my granddad's shed because we knew it would come in handy for the build. It's amazing how many useful things you can find in a granddad's shed. You would think that painting the outhouse would be a simple job, but knowing us we made it more difficult for ourselves. We had accidentally picked up the paint that we didn't have enough of to cover the whole outhouse, so after painting the front we decided to paint it with a different paint. It worked out for the better though because we much preferred the paint we ended up using and the colour that it is now. We picked up these Georgian style windows for free before we came out to Portugal. We knew that they'd just need a little bit of TLC for us to restore them to their natural beauty. It's amazing what you can do with a little bit of sandpaper and paint. The door is something that we found for free. It was nice to start putting a coat of paint on it because we knew that was all that was needed to bring it back to life.
ready for round two? Round two is what? Choose your weapon! The best part about painting is peeling off the masking tape, so I've been looking forward to this. So here we go. Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! Wow! <laughs> amazing! Oh yeah! Oh amazing! Look at that! Oh, so crisp. So now that Laura has took off the masking tape off the windows, I'm now going to um fix a new door handle to this door that we kind of uh, recycled. We actually brought this door all the way back from the UK, all the way over from the UK and we, we picked it up for free and we always had plans in our mind that we were going to um, recycle this and we're really chuffed with how the colourings come out and, um, and now kind of like putting these last little touches on is really going to give it like a nice little finish. <laughs> Previously spray painted all the knobs and hinges for the windows. It was great to see it all start to come together now. All of the painting inspired me to do some of my own artwork to decorate the inside of the outhouse. The first step was to find the best piece of wood for the canvas. I ended up picking this piece because it reminded me of an owl's wing, which is what inspired the painting. that know me know that I'm a very detail-oriented person. I blame that on Virgo being my rising sign. But when I don't have a creative outlet for this energy, it manifests itself as self-criticism and picking myself apart. What I love about painting and art is that it allows me to channel that detail-oriented and perfectionist energy in a healthy way to create something beautiful that I'm proud of. Living a life that's more simple promotes more inspiration and creativity for me. The birds, the landscapes, the trees, the sounds are all my inspiration and I love being immersed in nature. In the past we would visit nature as if it were a theme park and something separate from us. 
but now nature is our home and it's something that we find very special. Being immersed in nature for me is such a healing process. I'm really chuffed with how the painting looks inside the outhouse. I was really looking forward to, to painting and kind of adding a more feminine touch inside of here because most of the jobs we've been doing have been quite like building orientated and not kind of putting the little homely touches in so, so I was really excited that I could add my own touch into the outhouse and it's not perfect and there's definitely things that I would change about it but I think if you can learn anything from this channel it's just to go for things and allow things to be imperfect and just give it a go because it ends up I think it's the imperfections that end up making things and give it its unique little touches and features. What I like most about the artwork is just it's very colourful and I think it just adds a lot of colour and life to this space which is really nice. And I also like the detail I've done on the owl as well. It's not Bob Ross standard but we'll get there. <laughs> With the abundance of courgettes we've been getting from our Portuguese neighbour, we made a dish called Lib Cusa. It's a courgette and garlic dip and it's something that goes well with our spelt flour flatbread. This is a dish that we've made very often. It's something that we discovered the recipe for when we were researching ways to utilise the abundance of courgettes we were being gifted from our neighbour. I know in the future having this dish will bring back amazing memories of our first few months in Portugal. So both Dan and I get quite a lot of messages from you guys asking about the van and I know that a lot of you guys are interested in coming off grid yourself and you know that van life's a really good bridge to doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take you inside our van and show you the setup that we've got so maybe you can see what kind of things you might need, what you might do differently in, in your van and so it'll be easier to bridge the gap to coming off grid. So just fair warning this van's a bit battered, it's, we've lived in it for two years and we've carried all the stuff that we needed to come off grid all the way through Europe in the van so we had the metal shed we had that in the shower we also had the polytunnel we had our tools we also carried all the off cuts of wood in it as you saw in a previous video so it's been through a little bit of a battering so please don't judge onyx too harshly <laughs> so yeah we'll show you inside what we realized quite quickly when we came during the summer is that you need a fly net or something to try keep the flies out because we didn't have one when we first arrived and there was literally just hundreds of flies getting in the van it was just disgusting and unbearable what we've got here is our gas intake so we just put our LPG in through there so it's just dead handy you can pull up to a, a petrol station where they do the LPG you just fit it on and then you top up your gas that way and our gas runs our two burner hob and our boiler which feeds hot water to the shower. Down here we'll have shoe storage as you can see it's quite full of shoes at the moment but 
when it was important to have somewhere just to put your shoes when you come into the van. So this is our little L-shaped seating area. We do a lot of work here. We do a lot, we eat a lot of our food here. What we do for a table is we've got a little screw in the thing there, which screws onto a pole and then that the table comes on top of that. So we'll have our meals here. So underneath here is where we had our compost toilet. We don't have that there anymore now because we utilize some parts of it to create the compost toilet inside the outhouse. Here we have our Berkey water filter. When you live in a van, it's like you can get water from pretty suspect sources. So we knew that having a Berkey would be really important just to filter out any sort of the, any of the chemicals or dirt that you get you found in normal water sources. Up here is quite messy. We'll have our spices and stuff, olives, vinegars, spices, honey. This is where we have our fridge. It's quite small, but it does us just fine. It's got a little freezer compartment, which is really nice. So we can put frozen fruit in there. So we've been enjoying that definitely when it's been really hot. So this is our bed. We sleep this way, which is just fine for us because we're, we're not that tall, to be honest. This is where we store our clothes. I don't really have a lot of clothes. As you might notice from the videos, I tend to wear the same things all the time. So it's ideal when you live in a van because you don't have much storage space. We do have storage space underneath this seating area. This seat lifts up and we've got a lot of storage underneath there. And we also have storage up at the top of the cabin. So this part of the van is what I call the garage. This is where the real work's done. We've got our inverter, we've got our solar charger, we've got our um, fuse box, we've got our uh, battery to battery, we've got a Wi-Fi um, box to, to boost the Wi-Fi so we can have Wi-Fi no matter where we are. We've got our two batteries and on this side of the van We've got our two, um, we've got two 25 litre jugs to store water. We've also got a 70 litre uh, water container to store water too as well, which is connected up to, a, to the plumbing setup. Um, and I think that's about it. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey darling. We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags As we've been walking around the property we've noticed that a lot of apples have fell down off the trees quite early so what we're going to do is we're going to go scoop them up and put them inside the compost pile because they're going to be a really great source of nitrogen for the compost Over there we've also got some uh, pulp left from when we pressed the grapes we're going to put that in as well, so it's going to make a really beautiful, diverse compost. So, yeah. So what we've done is we've took just a small portion of the apples that had actually fell down from the trees. This is going to be enough for this compost. We don't want to over burn it with too much nitrogen. But um, we've left a good portion of the apples up at the top just to let the natural process of decomposition happen up there just to enrich the soil up there as well. We also went to collect another bag of sweepings from the barn to mix in with the apples and grape pulp. Every time we head up to the barn, we're always filled with an excitement and enthusiasm to turn this into our home in the future. This barn has so much potential. I mean, we're really looking forward to, in the up and coming months, start to really start to work, work in here, you know, once it gets a bit cooler outside and start pointing the walls and start actually kind of like really making this a home, you know. But there's, a, there's obviously a lot of work to do before even then. Um, but it's such a, 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 I mean, we've been we're really lucky with the, with the barn that we kind of found because it's really well intact. I mean, some of the things that we need to do, it just needs a new roof, 
and then obviously then it needs to be pointed on the outside and the inside and we're going to be chipping away at a lot of this concrete to bring back the natural um, feel of the, of the original granite stone but it's going to really look good you know and, the, and what we really like about it is that the barn is very deceiving on the outside it actually looks a lot smaller but once you get inside the roof length is, is, is really big so we'll be able to put a mezzanine up the top with some stairs going up we're going to have a full layout kitchen um, a place to chill and sit a fireplace and one, anything else that would come up with as well but it's going to be a really great adventure and we're really looking forward to share it with you all and start and really getting things um, in motion in here this is the job that everyone fights over wanting to do laura was adamant she wanted to do it but i was i was like saying no laura laura i have to do this job i absolutely have to do it but on a serious note, this is the job that Laura's made me do, haven't you, Laura? <laughs> you volunteered. You were too eager to do this job. But this is the job that everyone looks forward to, and this is cleaning out the poop. So basically what we're doing now is I'm going to get the compost out of here, and we're going to take it down to the compost pile where we're going to start the beautiful process of where the poo churns and turns into golden manure. Hugh manure. <laughs> Hugh manure. Oh. Yeah, Hugh manure. As the night drew to an end, we decided to have a play about with some head torches. Tonight we've decided that we'll want to be brave and go around the land at night with our head torches on and just see if we can find any animals. And what we're looking for is just seeing the, the eyes, the little eyes reflected back at us with it when we shine the light on them. But I don't know if it's working, I think I'm just getting loads of moths attracted to my forehead. <laughs> Laurie, you, look, you actually look like a little, um, look like an angel. Do I? Yeah, I mean, you've got like a he look like you've got a halo, halo around your head. Oh, <laughs> Our search for any wild animals was unsuccessful. I think we were having too much fun and making too much noise for any animals to make an appearance. Tell a ghost story. There once was a man who used to eat children. God, you look scary there. Yeah. We an outro. Oh, the moths are flying me crazy. We an outro. There once was a man who used to bury so children scary, in his back garden. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>